Sonos's premium portable speaker has had a refresh, offering a number of upgrades over its predecessor, but is it right for you with so much choice in the Sonos ecosystem? Hey guys, Louis from Smart Home Sounds here, and is it right for you is just one question that I hope to answer in my in-depth review of Sonos's latest edition, the Sonos Move 2. Now, I'm gonna be looking beyond the Sonos marketing and really testing this speaker out for its sound quality, its battery life, durability, its USB-C line-in and power bank charging, as well as comparing it with other speakers in the Sonos lineup, including the ERA speakers. Plus, I'll be answering three big questions. So number one, who is this speaker right for? Number two, is it worth its £449 price tag? And three, should you upgrade from the Move Gen 1? As always, if you do decide that the Move 2 is right for you and you want to support us, then head to smarthomesounds.co.uk. Now we do also offer a free extended six year warranty on all Sonos products, as well as extended 30 day returns. If you give it a go and decide that it's not for you. And if you do find this video helpful, then we would love it if you could subscribe. It really helps us out and it means that we can keep making more content like this for you. So this Move 2 is the next generation of Sonos's first ever, what we like to call hybrid portable speaker, replacing this, the original Sonos Move, which has been around for about four years now, launched back in 2019. Now Sonos have also since released the Roam and the Roam SL, which are more lightweight portable options and come with a much more affordable price tag. But the bigger Move almost sits in a slight middle ground between their more portable options and their range of wireless speakers. And in the whole lineup, we'd say that the Move now sits somewhere between the era 300 and the era 100. And I'll come back to the differences in sound performance in a bit. Now this Move 2 isn't a massive overhaul like we saw with the Arc replacing the Play Bar. It's an upgrade, which is now ticking more boxes, including doubled battery life to 24 hours, dual tweeters for stereo sound, expanded USB-C functionality, and of course, a refreshed design. So as you can see, at first glance, there's not really a huge change here. It's still got the same dimensions, it's still got the same chunky weight to it, and we've still got the silicon base with the wraparound grill, and of course, the integrated carry handle on the back. However, there are a few differences that are worth pointing out. So firstly, they've changed the colorways ever so slightly. So this isn't a huge difference, but it does make these new Move Gen 2s look a little bit more modern, and the branding is a little bit less discreet. And they've also changed the old lunar white, which is really an off gray color to actually be white, which matches the other white speakers in the Sonos lineup, which looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. And you'll notice with the new black colorway, it's changed from shadow black to black to again match the other Sonos speakers in the lineup. Now I've not got one here, but they have also launched an olive green colorway too for those who aren't into the black or white aesthetic. Now on top, they've again made a few changes here. So they've added the volume slider that was introduced with the era products and there's now a speech bubble icon to turn off voice assistance, or you can use the switch at the back to completely turn the power off to the mics if you want total privacy. Now something that they have changed is the charging base that comes with the new Move Gen 2. Now this dock on the old Move is great for having a home view Move and it works by trickle charge. So you could leave your Move on there all of the time, taking it off every now and then to move around the home without ruining the battery. Now with Move 2, they've actually changed the design of the base slightly and they've made this plug smaller and detachable. Now that does sound like a small change, but for those with an old move with this old base, then you'll know that this plug wasn't the easiest to fit behind a unit or a bedside table, and it is a little bit bulky to chuck in a bag. So it's a good change in my eyes, and hopefully you guys can tell the difference in size on camera. As well as the base, we still have the USB-C port on the back here for charging, which is the same as on the Move Gen 1, but it now brings extra functionality, and it can be used to connect up to an external audio source or act as a power bank to charge your devices, and I'll definitely be testing all of that out later. Now, of course, I'll come on to the internals and connectivity very shortly, but for context, on the new Move Gen 2, we've got an all new makeup under the grill, consisting of three Class D amplifiers powering dual tweeters and a single woofer, which is a step up to stereo sound from mono on the original Move. So in theory, this should be the same durable speaker that we know from the Move, but I'm not one to miss a chance at a durability test, so let's see how it holds up. Let's face it, the Move has been a speaker that's designed to move from room to room or from inside to outside into the garden and those kind of things. So we're not expecting this to withstand any really significant drops, but we are gonna test it in more realistic scenarios. And it is of course made of shock absorbing materials. So we're gonna give it a couple of drop tests, both outside here and at home in the garden, and we'll see how it holds up. So 
So that just about concludes our drop testing and I would say that the Move 2 has definitely passed. Now I do just want to show you some of the very slight scratches and dents that have all occurred around the top panel and that's as a result of dropping it onto the concrete and there is one very slight scratch on the back here. All the damage there is to it. The rubber base looks completely unscathed as does the grill. So as I said, I think this is a definite pass and of course we have tested it and it sounds absolutely fine. This speaker also has an IP56 rating which means it's not fully waterproof so that rules out our usual dunk test but it should be able to withstand a bit of rain, the odd splash and it's also resistant to dirt ingress, humidity and and sun. So let's give it a test. Does that look like rain? What if I shake it? So there we have it guys from the waterproof testing, the move has held up absolutely fine. I wouldn't really want to push the move any further than what we have done today durability wise, but for what it's been designed for, we can definitely class the move to as durable. When it comes to connectivity, the original Move already ticked a lot of boxes, but we do upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 on this new generation. Now, Wi-Fi 6 will offer the most reliable form of streaming when you're at home, but it's good to have Bluetooth as an option when you're away from home. Now, there are a few Bluetooth settings in the app worth knowing, so Always Auto Connect means that your Move 2 will automatically connect to your Bluetooth device when switched into Bluetooth mode, and Idle Auto Disconnect will make sure that the Move disconnects when you've not played anything for a while. With Move 2, we still get control via the Sonos S2 app, Spotify Connect and AirPlay 2. And we also have voice control options with both Amazon Alexa and Sonos Voice, but Google Assistant isn't available on this Move 2 due to ongoing relationship issues between the two brands. Now, this isn't gonna be ideal for those of you who have other Sonos speakers using Google Assistant, and you can only use Alexa or Sonos voice control when you're connected over Wi-Fi. So no luck on using your voice to control playback over Bluetooth yet. Now, as with the era products, there's no Sonos net on the Move 2, but with Wi-Fi 6 and rumors of Matter Thread, we see those as the future of connectivity around the home. Now, one of the main upgrades with this new Move 2 is the battery life, which makes a big difference in how much you can move this around your home and out into the garden and those kind of things. Now, the old Move launched with a 10 hour battery life, which was upgraded a few years ago via a software update to 11 hours. Now, this Move 2 has a more powerful battery and they've said that it offers up to 24 hours of playback when played at moderate volume, connected over Wi-Fi and with voice assistant enabled. So we put that to the test. Now, we turned both power saving modes off to try and get a minimum battery life and found that the Move last lasted 22 hours at 50% volume over Wi-Fi. Now, for context, we did test this out in our cold studio, which will have impacted the performance a little bit too. So in a warmer space and with that Wi-Fi power save turned on, it does seem like Move 2 will get to that 24 hour battery life, if not exceed it. Now, we also tested the recharge of the speaker and found that from dead to 100% battery, it took just over two hours on the charging base, which is pretty good going. Now, I would have loved to see a quick charge feature on this, but overall, I'm happy with the performance that it gives. Standby power drain is where the speaker really exceeds expectations. As it's been designed to move around your home and in reality be left off the dock at times, the battery drain when idle or not playing anything is pretty important. Now there's nothing more annoying than going to connect to your speaker and finding it died overnight. Now the Move 2 will go into a sleep mode which helps reduce power drain but keeps the Move almost in standby so it will wake up when you open the Sonos app. Now the alternative is to physically power it off with the button at the back to reduce power drain the most. There are also two battery saving modes in the Sonos app that help with battery life. So first off, we've got a battery saver toggle and that's going to switch your move off quicker, essentially powering it off after about 10 minutes or so. If you're happy with that, then you'll have to charge it less, but it does mean it won't be ready for you to tap play on the top or group in the Sonos app. The other toggle we have is Wi-Fi power save, which is supposed to extend the battery life when on Wi-Fi. So we tested this out and left both of our Move 2s for 40 hours in idle mode, one with that Wi-Fi power save toggled on and the other with it left off. Now the one with the power save on was at 98% battery life after 40 hours. The one with no battery saving modes toggled on was at 91% after 40 hours. So still pretty good, but you can see that the Wi-Fi power save toggle does help extend that idle battery life. Now for context, we also tested the Move 1 with its power saving mode turned on, and that was at 61% after the same time and needed to be physically turned on to start listening. So all in all, the idle battery drain is a massive plus for the Move 2, and it means that you can easily leave it off the dock for a week or so, and it will still have battery and be ready to play. Yeah. Now, so 
Sonos have also made this move more energy efficient and should use 40% less energy than the original move, which is great. But of course, I made sure to test this out with a smart plug. Now in my tests, the Move 2 is considerably more efficient than the first generation. So when playing music at 50%, the Move 1 costs around four pence per day, whereas the Move 2 came in at half that, costing two pence per day. Now when left idle on the charging dock, Move 1 costs two pence per day, and again, Move 2 have that to just one pence per day. So overall, we are looking at around a 50% less energy with this new Move. As I mentioned earlier, one new feature of the Move 2 is it can act as a power bank, so you can charge your phone using this USB-C slot. Now this is a great feature for a more heavy duty portable speaker, and while you probably won't use it all the time, it's really handy if you're out and about and need a top up, but I'm always skeptical as to how much that will drain the power of the speaker. So in our testing, it took two hours to charge my phone up from 18% to 84%, so an increase of 66% in that time. The Move 2 went from 100% charge down to 72%. Now, I wasn't playing music, so that would also lead to a quicker drop in battery. Now, what was interesting was that as the Move 2 was idle, it did go into sleep mode a few times, which stopped charging my phone, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. Now, obviously, that wouldn't be an issue if you were playing music, either over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. The other USB-C upgrade for the Move 2 is you can now use this as a line-in to connect up to a turntable, computer, or other audio source. Now, you will need to pick up one of these Sonos adapters to do so. So we have tried other USB-C adapters, but haven't found one that works yet. Previously, if you wanted to use your Move to connect to a turntable, you would have needed to use Bluetooth. So this new functionality gives you more versatility, and I can see this being a very popular option for bringing vinyl into your Sonos ecosystem. Now, I've tested this out for both a turntable and with my Mac, and it works perfectly and is a great use for this speaker in my opinion. Now we've also tested connecting our computer via Bluetooth and it worked well with no delay, but it is worth noting that you can't use the mic on the move for Zoom calls or anything like that. Now one feature that Sonos are well known for is their TruePlay software, which optimizes your speaker for the space that it's in. Now with their portable speakers, we have Auto TruePlay, which as you might have guessed, automatically optimizes your speakers without requiring you to do anything. Now, as these are designed to be moved around into different spaces, this feature makes sure that your speaker adjusts to its new surroundings. Now, it does this by using internal mics to measure the frequency response from the music in response to its surroundings. Now, they've said that tuning will happen around every 60 seconds on Move 2. Now, we did test this by placing it behind a box to see how it adjusted to that more dramatic change in environment, but it didn't really translate across on camera. And that's because it's a subtle tweak to the performance to suit the environment. It's not a massive change that you'll hear instantly, but it does slightly adjust performance, which is obviously a good feature to have. So moving on to the bit that we've all been waiting for then, how does this sound? And is it much of an upgrade on Move Gen 1? So internally, Sonos have completely overhauled Move 2, which will give us a different performance from the mono single tweeter, single woofer Move 1. Now they've also added custom waveguides in Move 2, which have been designed to finely control the direction and dispersion of frequencies to give us a wider and more balanced soundstage. So before I give you my thoughts, let's see what you guys think. And as always, our usual disclaimer that what you hear over YouTube won't be exactly what I'm hearing right here in our studio, but it should give you a flavor of what you can expect. So from our testing and comparisons with the original Move, firstly, I think that the Move 2 still very much gives a signature Sonos sound. It's nicely balanced and it's definitely a powerful sound that will fill a decent sized space and also pack a punch when you're outside too. Now that dual tweeter configuration gives a wider and bigger sound and I think that the vocals are also more open and projected and feel like they come through the track cleaner. Now I've been really impressed with the detail that you get with that stereo sound and overall, the separation between the layers of tracks is great. Now of course, you can 
choose to stereo pair two Move 2s for an even more accurate stereo sound performance. And we've tested this out and this is a pretty great setup, which takes that wide soundstage to another level. For me, I love the sound of the original Move, so another step up is pretty impressive. Now, it's not a huge difference, but it is a notable upgrade, especially having listened to it over a number of listening sessions and testing out a variety of different tracks and genres. Now, we've done a lot of comparison tests between the two models, and while we were expecting a wider performance, better vocals, and those kind of things, what did really surprise me in testing is that there seems to be an upgrade in the mid-bass performance on the Move 2, which we weren't expecting. I presume there's been some additional tuning carried out on this new upgrade, but the overall performance feels like it's got almost an extra layer to tracks, which makes the overall performance feel more impressive. Now, one thing that I noticed with the Move 1, which is sadly still there with the Move 2, is the bass seems to be clipped at higher volumes. The low end still sounds great around 75%, but once we push past that 80% mark, there is a notable clipping in the bass performance. Now, this of course is not ideal, but for the use case of this speaker, I still think that the bass is impressive and it will satisfy most people. Now, overall, if I had to put a figure on it, I would say that the Move 2 is maybe 15, 20% better than the Move 1 on sound performance alone. Now, one thing that you guys have asked a lot in the comments of our Move 2 announcement video is how does this compare with the new Era product? So I thought I'd do a live listen with you guys to see what we all think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a track and then switch between the 100, the Move 2, and the Era 300. So I'm gonna start by playing music out of the Era 100. We'll then move over to the Move 2, and then the 300 to give you guys a good idea of how these different speakers sound. Hopefully that translated across well for you guys. Now my initial thoughts are that the Move 2 is definitely sitting bang in the middle of the two era products. It's almost the perfect era 200 product in terms of sound performance. Now there is a step up in performance when it comes to power and bass from the era 100 to Move 2. And then we step up again when it comes to era 300, which offers a far wider and more room filling sound. Now the Move 2 is 200 pounds more than the era 100. And I would say it's around about hundred pound better in terms of sound performance. So you're paying about hundred pound premium there for portability, which I think makes sense. Now the Era 300 is also £449, so you really have to weigh up if you want a more premium sound performance and the ability to experience spatial audio with the Era 300, or if you'll get more for your money with a speaker that you can move around and make the most of in multiple rooms of your home, as well as take away with you for the weekend. Now I will be doing a dedicated comparison video between these three products for those of you who want to go a little bit more in depth before making your decision. So as always, make sure you get any questions down in the comments below. Now there are already a number of frequently asked questions that I thought I'd go through rapid fire style for you guys. Firstly, can you stereo pair the Move 2 with a Move Gem 1? Now while you can group these two speakers, you won't be able to make a dedicated stereo pair as one of the speakers is mono and the other is stereo. Next up, can you use a pair of Move 2s as rears? Now sadly, no. Sonos have still not added the functionality for their Bluetooth speakers to be used as rears. And they've said this is because you could take one away and it would cause issues with the setup. But my gut is that they prefer to sell you a set of speakers as rears, such as the Era 100s or Era 300s, and then sell you another speaker for use as a portable speaker. Thirdly, can you add a sub? Now no, you can't add either the Sub Mini or the Sub Gen 3 with the Move 2. And again, Sonos has said that this is because you could take your Move out of the room and that would then cause problems with the connectivity and then break the bond between the products. Number four, can you stereo pair over Bluetooth? Now no, you must connect to Wi-Fi to use a pair of Move 2s in a stereo pair. However, as long as you're at home and connected to Wi-Fi, then you can send audio via Bluetooth, which can then also be sent to any other Sonos speakers in your network. Now, back to those big questions from the start. First of all, should you upgrade from Move Gen 1? Now, my gut instinct is no. 
I don't think there's a big enough jump up to warrant an upgrade here. And I still think that the Move Gen 1 offers a great experience and sounds great too. However, if you think that the Move 2 ticks a big box for you, such as the USB-C line-in functionality, then you might want to add one to your home and then you could always look to sell your older generation Move on. Now, personally, given how much I use my Move off the dock, the Move 2 with double the battery life is a big plus for me and would be what tempted me. Is it worth £449? Now, this time, I think the answer is yes. I would say that the Move 2 does offer some good upgrades over its predecessor, and as a portable addition to someone's Sonos home, it will offer a lot of functionality and an impressive sound performance. Now, I think if you were happy paying 399 for the first one, then it's definitely worth an extra £50. Now, if you already thought that £399 was too steep, then chances are you'll also have the same thoughts with this one. Now, it's not going to be right for everyone, and if you're someone who isn't invested in the Sonos ecosystem, then you might want to check out our heavy-duty portable speaker comparison video as I do think that you are paying a premium for the Sonos ecosystem. Now, if you put it into context of the era 100, yes, it's a step up in price, but it's also a step up in performance. And because of the portability, it's like having a more powerful era 100 in your bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, and garden. So who is it right for? Well, hopefully the answer to that has become clear throughout this video. But for me, this is for those who have been waiting for Sonos's premium portable speaker to tick certain boxes, or for new Sonos users looking to take the plunge in a way that gives Sonos sound in multiple areas of their home without needing to fork out for four or five speakers at once. However, there will be some of you out there who might not be as bothered by the portability, who might be better spending your £449 on an era 300 and benefiting from a superior sound experience. But it's over to you guys now. Is the move too worth it? Let me know what you think in the comments below.